because it's uh, it's ten minutes after nine now. So let's let's pray together. In the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. We give those trespasses against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from the evil one, in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> okay, um, we're going to start tonight, God willing, in chapter 17. Abuna finished last time, chapter 16. And uh, <clears throat> before we start chapter 17, I want you please to go to one verse in chapter 15, 15, go to ch chapter 15 in 2 Samuel, verse 31, 2 Samuel 15, 31. Okay, can someone read only one verse for me? Anyone? Can you repeat where that was again? Verse 15, sorry, chapter 15, verse 31. Second Samuel. Chapter 15, verse, verse 31. Then Got someone it? told David, saying, Achitophel is among the conspirators. Uh, with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray, turn the counsel of Afito full into foolishness. Thank you. So Ahitophel was one of the closest um, advisors, let's call, call it uh, military advisors to David. When David was a king, Ahitophel was someone that always David asked his advice or his idea of the situation. And please read the last verse in chapter 16. The last one, verse 23. Did you get it? Chapter 16, verse 23. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yes. Now the advice of Ahitophel, which he gave in those days, was as if one who had inquired at the oracle of God. So was all the advice of Ahitophel, both with David and with Absalom. Thank you. Thank you. I'm just trying to show you who Ahitophel was, okay, and how significant this person in the kingdom with David, with King David, and with his son Absalom, when Absalom became a king. Okay, now chapter 17, look how, how it started. It says, moreover, moreover, Ahitophel said to Absalom, now let me choose 12, now Abs Ahitophel is giving an advice or a counsel to the king at that time, the king now, the king is Absalom because David already, as you know, fled Jerusalem and took with him uh, Joab, the head of the military, and few hundreds, probably, probably maximum a thousand or two soldiers. So I want you to understand the situation. Absalom now assumed the kingdom. He is a king now. And David fled the palace and Jerusalem and took with him Joab and the probably 2,000 soldiers and fled to the mountains. So Ahitophel gave a counsel to the new king and told him, now let me, let me choose 12,000 men and I will arise and pursue David tonight. I will come upon him while he's weary and weak and make him afraid and all the people who are, who are with him will flee and I will strike only the king. So Ahitophel told the new king, I'll take, 
I'll pick up 12,000 people. Remember, David only has maximum 2,000 men with him. So I had told the, the new king, I'll take 12,000 people with me and they go tonight. And the king, I'm sure David is so weary and tired and weak. So me and the 12,000 soldiers will, we, I will, man, once Joab and the 2,000 men with David will see us and will see how, you know, the number, our number, they will flee from us. And then David will remain by himself. So I will kill David and I'll bring to you Joab and the 2,000 soldiers with him. So the whole kingdom now will be united behind you. That was the counsel of Ahitophel to the new king Absalom. And he continued in verse 3 and says, then I will bring back all the people to you. So Ahitophel is telling Absalom, I will kill the king. I'm not going to kill anybody else. <coughs> and bring with me Joab and all the people with him. When all return, except the man whom you seek, everybody will come back to you, except the man, which is David, whom you seek, because I will kill him. All the people will be at peace. So that was the counsel of Ahitophel to go with 12,000 people, kill David, and bring Joab and the soldiers back to, the, to Absalom, and we all going to be one army behind you. And the saying pleased Absalom. The king liked the idea. The saying pleased Absalom and all the elders of Israel. So everybody in Israel or everybody was around the king at the time really liked the idea or the counsel of Ahitophel. Verse 5. And Absalom said, Now call Hushai the archive also. And let us hear what he says too. Remember, I asked you to read a couple of verses in chapter 15, which, which was in chapter 15, the verse we read said that people came to David after David fled and told him, Ahitophel now, your counselor, now he's, a, he's counseling the new king Absalom. So David at that time prayed prayed and, and prayed to God and said, God, please turn down the counsel of Ahitophel. That was way back in chapter 15, when David heard the news, just raised his heart and made this very short prayer. Lord, please turn down the counsel of Absalom. And if you remember in chapter 16, the last verse we read, we, I just wanted to show you the counsel of, of, of Ahitophel, how strong was it? It was very strong to the extent that people thought when Ahitophel speaks, as if God speaks, as if God speaks. Whatever Ahitophel says, it's as if, as if it is coming from God himself. So, here we are in chapter 17 in in verse 4 and verse 5 here is how god heard the prayer of david when he when when david prayed god please turn down the counsel of ahitophel now god is answering david's prayer see in verse 5 it says then Absalom said, now call Hushai the archite also, and let us hear what he says too. So the king here said, let's call Hushai the archite. Remember Hushai the archite? In chapter 16, Hushai the archite was another counsel to King David when he was a king. But the, as if you say, Ahitophel was number one, Hushai was number two. And when David fled, Hushai went to David and told him, let me come with you. You are my king. I will never counsel any other king. I want to come with you. And David said, no, go back, go back 
and be beside the new and stay beside the new king Absalom because being there with him you can tell me you can send messages to me remember he said you're going to send the messages to me with the two young priests when the, when the when the when the older priests wanted to, again to flee with David David said to him no do not come with me go back you and your two sons the priests go back and if there's any message let your sons the priests bring it to me same thing happened with Hushai Hushai wanted to flee with David David told him no go back stay with the new king and if you want to deliver any message to me send it with the young priest to me so that was as uh, if, if you remember that was a setup the system that David established <clears throat> when he fled that the young priest will deliver the message because no one no one will doubt a priest so the young priest will deliver a message to David and Hushai will be very close very close to Absalom and will 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 learn or will know what's happening in the palace and send the news to David so here in verse 5 look how God answered the David prayer since when when the king get or when the king gets the counsel of Ahitophel since when the king bring another counselor to ask for another for another idea or another counsel <clears throat> that was very very strange never happened before what if <coughs> excuse me if Ahitophel says something that's it that's it. as if God speaks but for the first time here, we see Absalom said, Tayyip, let us ask Hushai the archite. Let us do something strange today. Bring Hushai the archite and let me see what he thinks about Ahitophel, Ahitophel's counsel. counsel. And when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom spoke to him saying, Ahitophel has spoken in this manner. Shall we do as he says? If not, speak up. So Absalom told, told Hushai, that's what Ahitophel said. Remember what Ahitophel said? Ahitophel said, I'll take 12,000 soldiers with me, go and kill David and bring, bring Joab and the 2,000 uh, soldiers uh, with, uh, with me with me to to the new king so Absalom that's what Absalom said to Hushai and told him that's what Ahitophel said what do you think Hushai so Hushai said to Absalom the advice that Ahitophel has given is not good at this time and this was like this was a huge surprise to Absalom, how on earth someone can say the advice of Ahitophel? Ahitophel, remember when he speaks as God speaks, the advice of Ahitophel is not good this time. Let us see why Hushai said that. For 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 said Hushai, you know your father and his men that they are mighty men, and they are enraged in their minds like a bear robbed of her cups in the field and your father is a man of war and will not camp with the people so Hushai told Absalom king you know you know that your father is a man of war and this is true by the way remember David being in war since King Saul was in the army of King Saul and after that after that if you remember he when when Saul started to fight David David fled for almost 15 years fleeing from King Saul because Saul wanted to kill him so David is a well well trained uh, warrior okay he has all the the 
the tricks and, and all the military experience. He, he has a long experience in this field. And not only him, him and Joab, the head of the army and the soldiers with him. So Hushai told, told uh, uh, Absalom, it's not a good idea because you know your father and the people with him, all of them are mighty men. And they are, they are really, really have a, like bitterly, they feel that they, they been um, someone like uh, uh, stabbed them because Absalom, the way he took the kingdom, it was like really bad. Who would have, th who would have thought that the son, the king's son were rebellion against his father? So that was a surprise. So that's why he says, he said, all these, the men are mighty men and they are enraged in their minds like a bear robbed of her cubs. I think when the, the, the worst thing is, um, a friend of mine goes for, for hunting a lot and he, and he hunts uh, uh, for bears, by the way. And he says, <coughs> the worst thing, if he shoot a bear and he finds out later on that this is a, a cub, like a young bear, because the mother will come and she will be like crazy, crazy mad. And like uh, she destroys anything in front of her. So that's why Hosha is saying here <clears throat> that those men now they feel like a bear that their the bear lost their cubs. Um, so that's why I don't think that's why that's what Hosha said. That's why I don't think that Ahitophel council uh, is, is a good is a good council this time. Surely by now Hosha kept going. Surely by now he is hidden in some pit. Okay, so Hushai is telling Absalom, surely by now David is hidden in, in some pit. He's not sleeping with, with his people. No, he's, he, he's, he's in a different pit, in a different area or in some other place. And it will be when some of them are overthrown at the, at, at the first that whoever bears it will it well that whoever hears it will say there's a slaughter among the people who follow Absalom. So what's going to happen is Hosha is telling Absalom, your father is not with them anyway. He's, he's in a separate pit in a separate place. This is number one. Number two, when when your people, as Ahitophel said go they go and gets get they get in in fight with david's people once two or three of absalom's or ahitophel's soldiers get killed all the soldiers of ahitophel will get scared because everybody knows that this those people with joab they are very these are the the best the the, the top of the military so they know that the people who are very strong and they're going to win it. They're going to win the war. So everybody wants two or three people from Ahitophel's people get killed. Everybody will flee and it will be a disaster. That was what Hushai told Absalom. So told him, do not do that because the people with your father are very well trained. And also your father is not with them. He's in a pit in a separate place. And once Hushai, once Ahitophel gets in war with them, gets in war with them, any like one or two will get killed, and everybody will, will be very scared because you know these people are very you know, strong and mighty people. And even he who is valiant, whose heart is like a heart of a lion, will melt to complete. So Hushai is telling Absalom, Yani, even the strongest guy for him. The strongest guy with Ahitophel, who has a lion, who has a lion's heart, will be melt immediately. For all Israel knows that your father is a mighty man, and your father is a mighty man, and Joab and the people with them are very mighty men, are very strong people. So no, that's, this is not 
a good uh, idea, King Absalom. That's what Hushai said. So now here is a here is a council of Hushai. First, Hushai showed the king why the Ahitophel's council why it's bad, why it's not a good idea. Now he will give him a council. Therefore. I advise that all Israel be fully gathered to you from Dan to Beersheba, like the sand that is by the sea for the multitude, and that you go to in you go to battle in person. So basically, he's telling him, No, don't do that, King, but let us do another thing. Let us bring all the men of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, thousands and thousands and thousands of people and like the sand on the sea and let us go all and you will be with us and let us go in war so we finish them all <coughs> so we will come upon him Hosha is saying so we will come upon him upon David in some place where he may be found and we will fall on him as the dew falls on the ground and of and of him and all the men who are with him, there shall not be left so much as one. So we're gonna go all of us on them and kill them all. Moreover, if he has withdrawn into a city, then all Israel, Israel here means Absalom and all the men of Israel, shall brave us until there is not one small stone found there. So even if he hide in a city, will drag the whole city. They will wrap the city with ropes and drag the whole city into the sea. So Absalom and all the men of Israel, look at the miracle. Look at this miracle. So Absalom and all the men of Israel said the advice of Hushai the Archite is better than the advice of Ahitophel. For the Lord had purposed to defeat the good advice of Ahitophel to the intent that the Lord might bring disaster to Absalom. So look here what happened. So Absalom and all the men of Israel said, the advice of Hushai the Archite is better than the advice of Ahitophel. This is history. For the first time, there is a better advice from someone, okay, better than Ahitophel, okay? For the Lord, had purpose to defeat the good advice of Ahitophel. Good, good advice of Ahitophel. Adol, I think ال, يعني if you can get the the Wi-Fi بتاعتك ال connection is a bit weak. So if you can get it a bit stronger, would be good. أبونا أنا ما عندناش صبح. We don't have internet at home, so actually I'm not I'm not using Wi-Fi. Okay. Good. good that we have you at least. Okay, continue. It's good. I just don't want to miss uh, any of your words. It's very good. Thank you. Uh, we are at verse 14. I want to, if um, anytime you want to comment or yeah please feel free anytime to to come yeah, in a bit let's continue Abdul. It's okay good. verse 14 um uh we were saying that um absalom and all the men of israel said the advice of hoshai zarkat is better than the advice of Ahitophel, for the lord had purpose to defeat the good advice of Ahitophel. the word good here does not mean Ahitophel's advice was good from or was from God. No, it's good military speaking. And to be honest with you, of course, Ahitophel's advice much better. You know what Hosha is trying to do here? He's trying to buy some time. He's trying to buy some time because it's going to take a long time to gather all the men of Israel from Dan to Beersheba 
and form a huge a huge army to go out into this war. The plan, Hushai, Hushai's plan was was to, to let the king take time to build the army. In the meantime, he will send a couple of messages to David to tell him, flee and get out of here immediately, as you're going to see. So Hushai's plan was to buy some time so David and his men can get away from this area completely out of it. Okay? And because Ahitophel's, Ahitophel's uh, advice was 100%, 100% winning. And that was, a, David at that time was an easy catch. <coughs> but God heard David's prayer, as we said, which came in, 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 in chapter 15, verse 31, when David prayed, God turned down Ahitophel's advice. Okay, that's when God listened to David's prayer. Look how God, sometimes we keep praying about something and probably you forget it. Or probably we say a very quick prayer and it reaches God in a second, but God does not really answer the prayer immediately. Okay? I don't know if even David, if you ask him, did you pray that Ahitophel's counsel get turned down, down by Absalom? I bet you that David will tell you, I don't remember, maybe. Because that was like a quick reply from David when someone came and told him, uh, Ahitophel, now he's the counsel of the new king. Uh, so David said, may the Lord turn his, uh, his, his, his counsel down. I don't think he's going to remember that. But God listens to every prayer that we say. Every time we pray, God listens to our prayers. And store it for the right time to come and, and answer the prayer. Put it into practical way at the right time to answer uh, the prayer. For the yeah, Lord, that purpose... Yeah, so uh, okay. this is where I wanted, I told you I want to jump in in this one. So uh, Ahitophel, as I mentioned last week, Adil is going to talk about this, um, uh, the, the council of Hushai and Ahitophel. And um, every time actually in the church, every single prayer almost in the church has that prayer, believe it or not. Uh, it's just unfortunate uh, because of time. We, we many times we skip that prayer, uh, but mostly if you hear, but it's the litany of the assemblies. Uh, there is a prayer uh, usually in, even in matins, like raising of incense in the morning, or even in the liturgy, or even in vespers. Usually, it's it's done inaudibly, uh, but all prayers, even blessing of homes, baptisms, you know, weddings. Uh, all, all prayers, they have litany of the assemblies. And basically what the litany of assemblies is, is basically we're asking God to come and bless our assembly. Whenever we gather, we want our assembly to be holy, to be godly, to, to glorify God. And there are so many things that hinder that. Uh, it's very dangerous, you know, when we get together. Sometimes we get together to gossip. Sometimes we get together to... To, to, to give one another advices. And we want those advices, the church always wants those counsels, those advices to be holy, to be godly. So this, the litany of assemblies, basically the priest starts by saying, and if there is a bishop or the Pope present, basically like the top rank present supposed to, is supposed to pray this, that it shows you how important this is in front of God. And uh, it says, again, let us ask God, the Pantocrator, the Father of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. We ask and entreat your goodness, O love of mankind. Remember, O Lord, our assemblies, bless them. Bless them. So, uh, and then the prayer goes and the priest says, grant that we may be, uh, that we may have them or be to us without obstacle or hindrance, that we want to gather in good. Hold according to your holy blessed will. We want to gather together according to your holy and blessed will. This is what Abuna is praying. 
And we want, if it's houses, houses of prayer, houses of purity, houses of blessing, grant them to us, O Lord, and to the servants who come after us forever. And this is here is now the part. To have this uh, houses of prayer, houses of purity, houses of blessing in our gatherings, this is what the church prays. We have to be careful with few things. So we ask God, you know, the worship of idols, the uproot them from the world, Satan, his evil powers, you know, trample and humiliate, get rid of uh, the evil powers, the offenders, those who are speaking against us, you know, uh, or heresies, wrong teachings, our assemblies, we, we ask God to uproot and get rid of uh, corrupt heresies, let them cease, stop. Uh, the enemies of your church, Lord, uh, also get rid of, uh, you know, strip their vanity, show them their weakness <coughs> speedily. Bring to naught their envies, their intrigues, their madness, their wickedness, and their slander, which they commit against us. Uh, and then it says, Lord, bring them all to no avail. Disperse their counsel, O God. Who dispersed the council of who? Achitofel. Disperse them, O Lord, uh, O God, as you disperse the council of Achitofel. So the church actually in every prayer, in every time that we gather in the church or in any form of prayers, we pray this. Unfortunately, many times we don't hear it because Abuna most likely uh, pray. Uh, praise this uh, prayer <clears throat> inaudibly. But it's such a beautiful uh, prayer, very strong prayer. It shows um, the spirit and the direction of, of the church in how we want to gather. Um, it shows like if, if any people come and if there is like a, a, an evil or a bad counsel, Lord, disperse it. The vanity or those who are wise, show them uh like uh their place basically put them in their place okay uh i really wanted just to highlight this part uh with adil and then abuna usually continues on to say um uh, you know arise lord god let all your enemies be scattered let those who <coughs> the holy name flee from your face but let your people be in blessing thousands of thousands ten thousand times ten thousand you know, if you're attending a liturgy or Vespers, you see Abuna um, during, if, during the gospel reading, usually you see Abuna sensing on top of the altar or ahead, in front of the altar like three times, a lot of times. This is when he's saying those parts. And then he turns to people and then he sends also with the Shurya, with the uh, censer, he senses also three times. Uh, but you see him basically sensing a lot. Maybe you don't count it. But that's basically, this is the prayer is going on. So if you see Abuna every, now, from now on, when you see Abuna is, is, is doing that during the gospel reading, facing the east and, and, and doing lots of sensing and then facing to the west to the people, when he's sensing the people, he's saying, as for your people, let them be blessing thousands of thousands, 10,000 times 10 thousand doing your will okay uh it's our church very rich in prayers and it links so many things in the bible in our lives so we we want to bring the life the bible into our uh, uh, uh life and live uh, the gospel the bible uh, every day sorry i took uh, some of your time Adu. go ahead no problem you can no, comment on what i said yeah no problem as well Yeah, well, that's beautiful. Thank you. <coughs> then Hoshai said to Zedok, now, now, if you just so I want to make sure that you are with me here. All what Hoshai was trying to do is to buy the, some time so he can send a message to, to David to leave the area and, and, uh, and uh, run, run right away. Then, because Hoshai knew it, he knew it that Absalom will go back to Ahitophel's council very soon. Like, yes, it, it sounded like Absalom the king 
liked Hushai's counsel. However, Hushai knew it, that it will take a few days. And after that, the king says, you know what? No, no. Let's, Ahitophel, let's go back to Ahitophel's counsel. And you're going to see it here. <clears throat> then Hushai said to Zedok and Abiathar, Abiathar, remember the two young priests, and told them, remember the two young priests, their job was to deliver the message, okay, from Hushai to David. So Hushai sent them to David saying thus, and so Ahitophel advised Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus, and, and thus, so I have advised. So uh, he told them what happened. Now, therefore, spend quickly until David, saying, do not spend this night in the plains of the, in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily cross over, lest the king and all the people who are, who are with him be swallowed up. So he sent the two priests and told him, Go and tell David, do not spend tonight in, in, uh, in, uh, in the plains of the wilderness. Run. Now, Jonathan and Ahimaaz stayed at Enrogal for the girls of the... Uh, this is where um, <clears throat> um, when the two priests came out, they went to a house of someone. Come to, so a female servant... Uh, once, once the, they left a female servant, uh, tell them, um, would come out and tell them, and they would go and tell King David. Basically, the female servant took the message from uh, Hushai to the two priests and told, and told him what Hushai said. Nevertheless, a lad saw them. See, when the devil never let anything go like as planned. But look what happened here. Nevertheless, nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom. So a, 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 a boy saw the two priests going out of, the, out of town. And that was kind of, why are they going out of town? Where, where are they going? So this lad went to the king, to Absalom, and told him, I saw the two priests going out to the plains. <clears throat> to the plains. And both of them went away, went away quickly and came to man's house in Bahrum, in, 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 in the village, who had a well in his court, and they went down into it. So the two priests went into the uh, little village on their way to David, went entered a little village and, and entered the house to hide there. That house had a well in it, you know, and, in, in, in some villages, some houses has wells in it. So that house had a well or has a well in it, okay? <coughs> so the two priests went into the well to hide there. Then the woman, the woman in the house, took, spread a covering over the well's mouth. The, the woman of the house took some covering on top of the well to make it look as if, you know, this is a very old place and there's a lot of things on top of the well. It's been like this for years and no one never opened the well to use it. <clears throat> okay. And the thing was not known. So basically she put, she hide or hid the two priests there and put this top on top of the well, a lot of things. And no one knew about this at all. And when Absalom's servants came to the woman at the house, they said, where are Ahimaaz and Jonathan, the two priests? So the woman said to them, they have gone over the water brook. And when they had searched and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. So they asked the, uh, uh, Absalom's men, asked the woman, where are the two priests? Where are the Ahimaaz and Jonathan? She told them they crossed over the river. They left already. I saw them here, but they left. They left and crossed the river. So they looked, searched the house, did not find them, and went back to Jerusalem. Now it came to pass after they departed that they came up out of the well. She opened, she took everything from the well and took out everything. 
Okay, and said to David, Arise and cross over the water quickly, for thus has Ahitophel advice against you. They told him, Cross over, cross over the river quickly, because Ahitophel advice was so and so. So David and all the people who were with him arose and crossed over the Jordan. By, mor by morning light, not one of them was left who had not gone over the Jordan. Here is there's a little um, point here that I would like to mention. Look at always, always we, we get saved by crossing of, over. Okay, the word cross over. It is the same word like Pascha. Pascha or Pascha, the Holy Week, it means crossover. Okay? So how did David here um, was saved? By crossing over, cross over the Jordan. So the Bible be, be highlights certain points that we, we should not take it very lightly. Okay? And so verse 22, so David and all the people who were with him arose and crossed over the Jordan. By morning light, everybody was already gone. Verse 23, now when Ahitophel saw that his advice was not followed, he saddled, he saddled a donkey and arose and went to home to his house, to his city. Then he put his household in order and hanged himself and died, and he was buried in his father's tomb. Look <clears throat> how evil this man was, okay? When, when, when he learned that he, the king did not take his advice or his counsel, he couldn't handle the situation. There are some people, they have this problems that when, once they get defeated, or they feel that they got defeated, they cannot handle the situation. They feel that, you know, uh, they want to die, they want to kill themselves. Why, what happened? Why, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Your counsel, your counsels were going very well. This is the first time, it's not a big deal, but he couldn't take it. It's a matter of pride. This man had a problem in his personality, pride that you cannot come near his pride. And look what happened here. Only for once that, no, that the king didn't take his advice, he killed himself. He killed himself. Come on, the same thing like Judas in, in the New Testament. <clears throat> then David went to Mahnaim and Absalom crossed over the Jordan. He and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made a massa captive of the army instead of Joab. Absalom needed a, a leader for his army instead of Joab because Joab went with David. And Amasa was the son of a man whose name was Jithra, an Israelite who had gone in Abigail, the daughter of Nahash, sister of Zurib, Joab's mother. Yani, Amasa and Joab were related probably like second, second cousins. So they were related to each other. Uh, so Israel and Absalom encamped in the land of Gilead. So basically, uh, um, uh, um, Absalom and his people crossed the river. Now it happened when David had come to Mahnaim that Shobi, the son of Nash, and the Rabbah of the people of Ammon. I want you to go, like, don't worry about these names. Okay? Uh, broad beds, and uh, those people, when, when David went to Mahanaim, it's, it's, um, it's a little town across the river. It was not an Israel. Those people were not, uh, were not Israelites. No. There were, like, from the Gentiles around the kingdom of Israel, but they were very close friends to David. They brought to him, they brought to him basins, er, uh, earthen vessels and wheat, barley and flour, parched grain and beans, lentils. to for David and his army to eat honey and and 
curds, sheep, and cheese of the herd for David and the people who were with him to eat. For they said, the people are hungry and weary and thirsty in the wilderness. So those, the, uh, the people of Mahanaim offered this food and gifts to David and his people. Glory be to God forever and ever. Amen. I want to please go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Adon. Thank you. God bless you. Any questions, guys? You can post them on the chat or you can just unmute yourself. Um, 